Tina, it's wonderful to be here. Wonderful to see some of my Lumion founders here too. And um, wonderful to be at New Frontiers. Um, I was here two years ago and uh, as part of that experience, sat in a whaikōrero, a, a sharing circle, with the people who were here that year, some of which are also here now. And, um, you know, the deep work of listening to each other. I think the soul work of gatherings. And it sounds like you did some of that work last night too. Well, what I want to talk about today is the soul work of standing for the children in the world, which is where I'm standing right now. It's a huge privilege, a huge challenge. And this image uh, is of a group of young Syrian refugees who were doing their soul work, telling each other their stories of escape from Syria. And I sat in that room with my heart open and watched these children listen so transformationally that um, they uh, grew in themselves a love of learning. And so that's the soul work I wanted to present this morning. Um, my privilege to work for UNICEF, it's a global organisation, my first experience of figuring out how to be an activist in a global government organisation, it's a weird thing. Uh, um, but UNICEF came out of the Second World War when the United Nations observed they had treated the children of the war appallingly. And they wanted to set up a voice to speak for children. And I'm struck by this photo because it's so similar to this one. This is a photo that splits a photo from the end of the Second World War with a photo from just last week, um, where across Europe there are barriers being raised to the free movement of refugees. And in those movements, there are small children. And as a world right now, we're failing to figure out how we support those movements in a way that keep those children safe. And in the context of the soul work of children, this photo was at the, um, the naming celebration of a wee baby born in Homs, completely bombed town, where I was visiting. Um, just this baby was a week old. And I was reminded about the power of ordinary acts and uh, that kind of presences what our soul work is all about. So um, in my talk today, I wanted to talk about the power of the extraordinary miracle of an ordinary childhood and what that means. Um, a safe place to play. This is a group of refugee boys in Lebanon and their place to play. And... I can't kind of get into this without naming that for all of us who work in UNICEF, about 12,000 people around the world, there's a set of personal feelings that go with, uh, well, if we're thinking about Syria, a regime that's happy to bomb its own people, to use starvation as a weapon of war against your own people, who um, just seem completely okay with that. And yet the job of UNICEF is to work with that government to protect the children in those towns. It's kind of like a terrible paradox, but also an incredible liberation. So this is one of my big learnings about this agency, is that at the same time I can personally be appalled that my focus isn't to worry about you know, is this the regime? Is it the Islamic State? Is it the various freedom fighters? It's where are the children in that street and how do I make sure they've got food and clean water and an opportunity to play and a place to be that's safe tonight? There's something incredibly liberating to just sort of duck under 
all that other level of conversation where I realise I've spent a lot of my adult life and ground it in the incredible miracle of an ordinary day. So this idea that the most radical thing I could do in my life is create ordinary, growing, living experiences. That having a child in school could be radical. Having clean water could be radical. Having food sovereignty in a town could be radical. And I'm entranced by this. I'm entranced by um, how that just grounds energy and work and kind of drops me under the who's right, who's wrong, who did what to who. And it kind of um, settles me into a loving pragmatism. I wanted to talk about what... Uh, one of the past incredible um, scales uh, that UNICEF did, which was working with Rotary, actually, eradicated polio. Um, and these days, uh, it's now become technological. This is an innovation of the Gates Foundation that, that carries 200 immu immuni polio immunisations to remote places. Um, without temperature variants. So innovation becomes the name of the game in areas where there's hardly any resource but much need. Some of you will recognise Sonny Bill Williams. He's sitting here talking with a young man who's trying to make the decision whether he should cross the border to fight for the regime and earn $500 a month to support his family, or whether he should go to school. That's the terrible dilemma for young people right now in Lebanon, that our biggest need to scale is access to education for young people, because Syrians really, really um, revere education. So if it's a question between education and the army, education will win. This young woman I spent a day with, she's a teacher, a peer teacher. She runs classes called How to Say No to Early Marriage. She's 17. She's been married and divorced. She's been raped, beaten, starved. And she radiates love and hope. And her classes were transformational. For her, we need to innovate. And for the young man that Sonny Bill spent the day with, we need to innovate. Interesting that Sam showed us shelters. This is a social enterprise. A couple of young students in um, Sweden came up with the idea of a refugee shelter that would be flat-packed and built with no tools. And they gave it to IKEA, who now um, UNICEF just bought 10,000 of these. They are um, solar-powered. They purify water. They sleep five people. They are put up in four hours with no tools. They'll last three years, and they cost a 1000 bucks. That's the kind of innovation that makes a difference in the world where I'm working. The yellow suitcase, you saw it briefly. That's a birthing kit with a solar-powered cover so that a birth can be lit. Most births happen at night. And, um, and in, in, if you were in Homs in that street you saw earlier, the chances of there being any light is um, pretty remote. And just in the last two years, these suitcases have gone all around the Pacific Islands, all around Africa. Um, a woman who was travelling, who was a midwife, saw this problem, went home to America, started innovating, and now within two years, UNICEF is rolling these out globally. They're just so simple and so inspirational. اسمي حنان عمري 11 سنة جيت من سوريا من محافظة الرقة جينا من نبطون أمهاتنا على سوريا ما جينا على لبنان
كنا قادي بدور ثلاثة ومطبخين و... يعني مو مثل هنا براكية وحدة ومطبخ و... قادي الدور كلها المصبوبات و... يعني الزينات لا هي خرا ولا شيء هنا يعني على التراب حتى ميتنا هنا ما هي زينة ما هي سوريا أحلى سوريا هي الوطن وهي الحب قادي أهم شيء حتى المتنا الموت بسوريا مو بلبنان هذا اللي عندي أتمنى سوريا ترجع So Laza too is an innovation of a different kind. It's the innovation of giving um, cameras to children who are living in camps and letting them tell their own story. And Hanan is um, a young woman who has had a terrible journey. And when I listened to her, what I got was, um, imagine the desperation of taking that love of your country and moving to Germany. Or in New Zealand, we're having the debate, the ridiculous, pathetic, unimaginative debate about doubling the refugee quota. I just feel so angry every time I hear it. It so lacks imagination. It's not that it's wrong. It's completely right. But it's totally unuseful. So, you know, I just want us to be able to think about how we do so much more, so much bigger in the way that the people who are experiencing this um, incredible tragedy would like, which is, I want to go home. So this whole idea about giving the voice to children, I feel very, um, is very powerful. I wanted to finish off telling you about an innovation in fundraising, because in the end, um, none of this work happens without that. So what I hear from New Zealanders all the time is, what do you do for New Zealand children? And mostly what we do is political advocacy to try and get our government to have policies that work well for New Zealand children, which actually no government in New Zealand has for about 30 years. Uh, um, so we came up with this idea for fundraising which links the lack of activity of New Zealand children and a growing obesity epidemic with the lack of nutrition for children in the developed world. And by setting up kind of like sponsored buckets of money, kids who wear their sort of UNICEF Kid Bow bracelet do activity and they set it up so that they are playing with each other in their class and between classes and within communities and within towns of New Zealand. And they, it's all linked up, they set challenges through the website and every Kid Power point they earn goes towards buying another um, meal for a child who's malnourished. And of course, we can connect up the stories of those children with the stories here, so we're growing global citizens. So that's a project that I'll be launching here in New Zealand this year. I'm really excited about it. I love the idea of children um, taking that idea about children's voices to children's action, to children understanding each other's stories and growing ourselves a bunch of global citizens. Um, Again, technology-based, I think in New Zealand this will be the first project that connects good for New Zealand children with good for children internationally through a, um, a wearable for good. So for every child, that's what this is all about. And I love in my life that there's a call to, um, for every child, every right, rather than that some children have more value or worth than others. Thank you.